Hello, um, let's get to it then. Uh, these are things that I like to see in a survival horror. Um, environments definitely are very important. Um, you know, eerie, creepy um, environments. I'm probably going to bring up Resident Evil 1 a lot in this video. Um, but yeah, uh, the Spencer Mansion. Yeah. So love that. It's this huge mansion in the middle of the woods at night with rain, lightning. Mmm, that sets the tone <laughs> right away. Uh, there's just something about it, you know? Um, and the only, you know, there's no human life. Not been for a while, so the mansion's a little bit Oh, abandoned. So it's even creepier, do you know what I mean? And it's just just something about a creepy old mansion, you know? Um yeah, so I just love games to have a great environment. Um so yeah, there's that. Um um yeah, I've played Resident Evil Revelations recently. I've completed it. Hurrah! Um and I absolutely love the ship. It was absolutely eerie. Um, like I say, environments are very important, you know, uh, for its creepiness and eeriness and, you know, mansions, old abandoned mansions, old abandoned ships, abandoned hospitals, you know, like stuff like that really sets the tone for a survival horror game or a horror game, whatever. Ah, okay, so um, puzzles. I do love puzzles in in the survival horror games. Um, obviously, Resident Evil is the one that comes to mind, <laughs> but uh, yeah, there are survival horror games that do puzzles. Um, but, yeah, puzzles. Um, I love puzzles to be interesting and clever. Um, not too into, I mean, they don't actually have to be super duper hard, you know what I mean? Just interesting, clever. Um, village, sadly, you know, <laughs> Where if you play it, played it, you know what I mean. The puzzles are pants. There you go. I'm just gonna say it. They're pants. Um, <laughs> just easy as hell. And uh, it. I'm probably gonna talk about Resident Evil Village a little bit more, but it failed for me in a few ways. <laughs> uh, but the puzzles, yeah. They might as well not bother putting any puzzles within that game because they were just really easy. They were not interesting, especially when you know the past Resident Evil games. The puzzles were always interesting, clever, and yeah. I mean, even Number Seven, like Lucas's birthday puzzle, for example, like that was interesting that was clever that was just that made that made you think and you know this is what i like um haven't got much light left <laughs> um yeah been doing uh well i've been working today so not got much light left to work with but uh ah you know what can we do got my cup of tea it's lovely um, yeah, ammunition, um, or no weapons. Sometimes, you know, not having any weapons in a survival horror game at times is absolutely frightening, you know? Um, like they get taken away from you, or, you know, some survival horror games, like Haunted Grounds, you don't have any weaponry. Um, you literally have to hide, um... And I, you know, I love that when they 
put that within the game um, is it is scary <laughs> but yeah as new um the older games they tend to not give you a huge amount of ammunition um so you would have to make a decision you know like i don't know let's just say you got five bullets you sort of turn the, the tight corridors of the mansion and see five zombies down the hallway and you're like oh oh um, but then you've got a door to your right, um, so you could enter the door to your right, or you can carry on, take those zombies out, but then you've got no ammunition, so maybe go into this door, but then there could be something in there that's way worse than these zombies in the hallway. Um, you have to make a decision, you have to think, and I absolutely love that in any survival horror game, but especially Resident Evil, um, and yeah, so you would go in the room and hope that there ain't anything too, uh, you know, big in there, or that would take all the am ammunition away that you have, or and hope that there's stuff in there, like a, another weapon or more ammunition for your gun for you to carry on but it's the, the fear of not knowing you know um i'm not a huge fan of the merchants <laughs> i'm just gonna say it um i know people absolutely love the merchants i mean i do you know especially the uh resident evil 4 merchant he's just he's a character and he um and even the merchant from the village. He, I did like him, he, he was a bit of a character too, but merchants take the horror away from me. Um, I don't like them in the Resident Evil games because when a merchant's nearby you feel safe, you immediately feel safe and I like the older games because it was the not knowing of when you're gonna get some more ammunition or weapons or anything, but with a merchant, it's like all there, you know. And yeah, just for me, the merchants take the scare factor away. Um, like I say, I like not knowing. Um, I like having, you know, to probably use your survival knife um, so you can preserve a bit of ammo, am ugh, ammunition. You know, am I, am I uh, but yeah, it's yeah the the lack of ammunition and weapons and sometimes not having anything at all. I absolutely love in the survival horror games and especially Resident Evil. Um, like I say, not too keen on the merchants. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if it, it just makes you feel helpless, um, not having much ammo, um, and not knowing when you're going to get more, um, is so much more scarier, or having no weapons at all, uh, I absolutely love that, um, yeah. Old Resident Evil games, or survival horror games, don't give you that much, um, that much ammo, um, and you have to preserve as much ammo as possible and health items and, you know, um, by using your knife or hope to get by zombies or other enemies. Um, basically choosing your battles. Using ammo when needed. Uh, resource management on the health items and ammo. Um, yeah. <laughs> I have to turn the lights on because it just gets dark too quick. Um, now, but uh, oh well, I had to do this in several. Uh, this is like the second day, <laughs> but it just gets too dark too quickly, so I'm sorry if it's really dark. But anyway, uh, the action horror games, uh, like the action y sort of Resident Evil's, the enemies like tend to drop ammunition, um, you get items from merchants, um, and like I said, the merchants 
they just make you feel really safe um and it just takes away the scare factor um and also you know all the enemies drop items as well so it's you just don't have that same feeling of helplessness in the older games of not knowing you know when your next ammo is coming or hellfire or whatever you know um so yeah it's um I, I uh, nothing wrong with action horror games or whatever um or action games with horror elements or whatever you want to call it i'm not sure <laughs> but uh yeah nothing wrong with them they have their place um you know they're just as fun but uh you know i'm just talking about all the things that I enjoy in you know survival horror so yeah um another thing I quite like in horror games survival horror game um I like you know horror games that mess with your head um you know psychological um the scarier the better basically I absolutely love horror games that scare me um, like Outlast, I played Outlast on the PC and, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> oh, I hated it but I loved it, do you know what I mean, um, I don't know why I like it, like, but I just, <sighs> games that put you on the edge, like the old Resident Evil games and, you know, there's a few other horror games like Outlast, you know, if they, you know, if it's, you know, I love eerie, yeah, like, just putting you on the edge of your seat, like, oh god, what's gonna happen next? <laughs> you know, that type of thing. I just, yeah, um, and I love, um, the Spencer Mansion and its tight corridors and, you know, even number seven, actually, Resident Evil 7, um, which I do actually really like. Um, I'm not just a fan of the older Resident Evils, I know what people may say, like, ah, oh, she just likes the old, you know, one, two, three, and Co-Veronica, and that's it, but no, 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 I, I do like one, two, three, Co-Veronica, they are my favourites, but I also like number seven, um, I feel like it did a lot really well, um, it, when I played that, I was just like, yes, Resident Evil's back. Um, the horror level, everything, like the tight corridors, the cla claustrophobicness. You know, you didn't have weapons and the bakers were like roaming around the home like, I'm coming to get you. <laughs> you know, uh, and you're like, oh. No, <laughs> I need weapons. I need weapons. Um, and it was just the not knowing, like, oh, when am I literally gonna get a gun? <laughs> um, <laughs> I have nothing. Um, it, oh, I loved it. Just loved uh, horror level, and that was amazing. Um, definitely scared you. Um, village, sadly. Uh, I know people like the village. Um, I don't dislike it, by the way, um, but it's just not my favourite because it just lacked so much for me. Um, no horror whatsoever. It was literally non-existent for me. <laughs> there was nothing that scared me in village whatsoever, and I did hear or read somewhere that they tamed the horror down. Why? Um, I think it was just, I don't know, I think it was probably because a lot of people said 7 was too scary or something along those lines, I have no idea. Um, been hearing things here and there. And I don't know, I mean a lot more people have bought number 8 uh, Village. Um, I think they tamed the horror down to bring it to the masses, I guess, and 
um, and they made it very actiony. Um, yeah, it was very actiony. I remember, and it was absolutely easy. I was quite shocked. I literally thought I put it on easy, like really easy by accident, and nope. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I'd probably get more into it. Um, but yeah, just the, the puzzles were easy, the bosses were easy, just everything was just, hmm, no horror, really action-y. It, it, literally, Village was an action game with horror elements, but it was not a survival horror. Um, but, you know, it wasn't a terrible game, like I say, um, I enjoyed it for what it was, an action game with horror elements, um, but not a true survival horror at all, sadly, um, and not really a horror game. Um, I don't know what's going to happen to the next Resident Evil, are they going to ramp up the horror again? Um, hopefully. Um, I guess we can only find out. Um, but yeah, I won't be rushing out <laughs> to uh, buy the next Resident Evil, I don't think. Um, uh, yes, just not for me, I guess. Um, but loads of people enjoyed it, and I'm really happy for people that thoroughly enjoyed the game. Um, yeah, it was very, wet, very, very well made. Beautiful. Beautiful. And the castle was gorgeous. And just all the environments. They got all the environments done really well. Like, it, it was gorgeous. It was just, like I say, back in horror. And it was really easy, I found. And the puzzles were not exactly taxing. I think that's the right word. Um, they're not hard, you know. Um, and it, well... <laughs> I shouldn't say hard. Like I say, they don't have to be hard, they just have to be interesting and clever. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, they tend to break up the horror in Resident Evil. I love puzzles. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, puzzles. Um, uh, finding keys through puzzles, solving to move on to the next area, or exploring to get keys. Um, you know, exploring through, well, mansions and so forth. Um, but yeah, I just, I love, you know, puzzles break up the horror. At, absolutely love the tight corridors in the Spencer Mansion. Um, and not knowing what's around the corner is absolutely frightening. Um, they did it really well in Resident Evil 7 as well, it, it felt so, you know, claustrophobic and you just, anything could have been around the corner, it was um, definitely added to the scare factor of things. Um, obviously gore, we love the gore, we love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, and. You know, if a horror game doesn't scare you, um, it's not doing its job. Um, so that's all brilliant. Um, I love the diaries and notes um, throughout. It doesn't have to be Resident Evil. There, there are notes and things in Project Zero and many survival horror games or action survivor, action horror games and whatever. There's probably so many horror different things. Uh, action, action horror, and survival horror games. Yeah, notes. I love notes, diaries. You know, it just adds to the creepiness sometimes. It adds to the story. I just enjoy reading all the notes and diaries throughout all the different horror games. You know, I think they're brilliant. Music. Yes, we love music. Music doesn't take away from the horror. Um, a lot of newer horror games don't tend to put music in. And the newer Re Resident Evil games don't seem to have any music, if I can remember. 
if they do it's very very little um but it doesn't take away from the horror of it um it adds adds to it adds to the eeriness um depending on what the area is but yeah and the, how the music plays but it just really adds to the eerie creepiness sometimes you know um and just so many new survival horror or action horror games just lack music and it's just like why i mean we all, all remember resident evil 1 2 3 code veronica you know the the music in those games are amazing it does not take away from the horror whatsoever and there's probably many old more old survival horror games um yeah no that uh equally as good music which i can't think right now <laughs> um there's yeah i mean i i don't dislike any resident evil game um obviously my favorites are like i said resident evil 1 2 3 code veronica and i love number 7 um my least favorites are 4 5 six and eight but it doesn't necessarily mean they're bad um i quite enjoy all of the rest of evils to be fair um and including like you know dead aim um outbreak file one two you know and all the little um not not you know the off i don't know what you call them the side games i guess um i love the revelations they're all very very different from one another um you know they like to experiment and nothing wrong with that i suppose um but i just love you know the true survival horrors i'm not too into the action horror games um they're all right but they're just you know they're not my fave um yeah uh but there's so many cool um indie game developers um, that are taking inspiration from the old Resident Evil games and older survival horrors um, like Silent Hill and stuff like that, you know? And there's this game called Tormented, I think. Um, yeah, it's Tormented. Um, and it just looks amazing and I can't wait to play it. It's going to be so fun. Um, it just reminds me of the older survival horror games. There were so many. I remember there were so many survival horror games um, on the PS1 and 2. I remember. And um, that's when I started getting into survival horror big time. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a little sad. I feel like, no, my favourite genre of games is dying. But... With games such as Tormented, I played Outlast, amazing. I played Layers of Fear. Um, oh god, I can't think of any more. Um, but there's, it, mm, there's just oh, um, jeez, oh, I forgot what it was now. But anyway, there's loads and loads of other survival horror games that I can play and enjoy. Um, don't know what's going to be happening with the next Resident Evil. Like I say, ain't got a clue. Um, be interesting anyway, I'm sure, um, see where the story goes, I guess, um, but, yeah, um, yeah, I love the old survival horrors, <laughs> what can I say? Um, this video may be all over the place, so, um, sorry about that, I just have all these, like, thoughts and things, I just can't... <laughs> You know, I'm not very. I'm not um, a speaker, a person that speaks to loads, and they, you know, I'm, I've never been that way. Um, so I do find it hard to do these types of videos. Um, you know, that's why I don't want to do like game reviews and things like that, because I just can't get my words out straight or properly or whatever. I just I generally find it hard to talk sometimes. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you for watching. Um, Bye.